directions is something that some of us do a better job of than others. In today's Kids Connection, Crystal Bearwall joins me from Red Door Pediatric Therapy to discuss the importance of teaching children to follow directions. Good morning, Crystal. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Seems obvious, but why is teaching the following of directions so important for children? Well, we use we follow directions every day in our daily lives. So with kids um, in the educational settings, the preschoolers are getting told to grab your jacket and go to the door. Our older kids are following multi-step directions to complete assignments. Um, in social situations, like whether they're playing sports, if um, they're playing outside or in gym class, that all requires to follow a direction with their peers. And uh, whether also they're playing board games requires following directions. And just in our daily lives, whether we're um, cleaning up the house, doing our chores, or making a sandwich, all require following directions. Right. Now, as children get older, I would imagine the, the, the younger ones have totally different directions to follow than as children get older. How do you break that down? So it's kind of easy in my mind where it goes by the age. So from right. age one to two, we want to see kids learning and mastering one step directions. So whether it is let's jump, clean up, one of the trickier ones is point two. Um, and then from ages two to three, they're starting to follow two step directions. So go get your coat and go to the door or a two element direction. Let's draw a red circle. And then when we get to age three to four, we want to see them mastering a three step direction. So that's kind of where we start playing those board games in more complicated directions. I would imagine just like anything else, if you can make a situation fun for a child, it's going to be that much more well accepted on their end. How do you go about following directions to be a fun thing? So for our one to two year olds, it's all about when we're starting to learn how to follow directions, it's about imitating an action. So whether it's the basic peekaboo, so they're learning to move their hands, so big is raising their arms. Um, if you're happy, you know it's kind of the one more obvious uh, to clap their hands. Um, and also just kind of making the directions more meaningful. We don't wanna just work on following directions by saying point to this, point to that, go grab this, go grab that. Um, kind of including them in those daily life tasks, like um, having them help you as much as they can sweep the floor so they get exposed to those kinds of words. Let's wash the vegetables. Um, for our older kids, they kind of have uh, more multi-step direction games. So those more active ones, I would say are like red light, green light. Simon says it's very um, action oriented. Um, doing an obstacle course exposes those kids to the words like over and under. Um, and I would say some board games for our littler kids uh, would be Candyland. Um, Pop the Pig is a popular one that I play with kids. Um, and then for those kind of older four or five year olds, I would say Shoots and Ladders, Connect Four, and just having kids participate in those tasks that require multi-step directions, what, like such as making a sandwich, having them complete all the steps in the order that you give them. And I would imagine just like in any other walk of life, some people are gonna be quicker learners than others. But I would assume that there are some red flags that we can look for if a child is having a difficult time following directions. Yeah, so we have, I often get parents saying, um, yeah, sometimes my kid doesn't want to follow the directions, which is often true. Some kids just don't wanna to listen to their parents. But some of those other red flags that you might want to look out for is if your kid needs um, a direction provided in a very simple manner, if they constantly need those directions repeated, um, if they're misinterpreting the, the directions. So when you tell them to put the bottle on the table and they just drop it, or if you say, kick the ball and they throw it, they're clearly not interpreting those words the correct way. 
Another very big key would be if the kid seems distracted, not making eye contact, um, they might just be anxious because they don't understand what you're saying. Um, and they, in a, a school setting, I would say that kids are often looking at their peers and seeing what they are doing when they were given a direction they don't understand. Mm -hmm. And you touched on it with the eye contact, Crystal, but what are some other things that, that we as parents and grandparents, we're down to about a minute, that we can do that we can help these children? Yeah, so eye contact is definitely key. Um, just using simple language, breaking it instructions into different parts if they have trouble with that, repeating, whether it be you repeat the direction or have them repeat it back to you. We often use first then language with a visual cue. So first we're going to get the coat, then we're going to get the table, and then just encouraging kids that it's okay to ask, what did you mean by that? So just all those cues to help those kids with following directions. Sure. Crystal, Red Door Pediatric is, is who you're represented. How can we get a hold of you guys we have further questions? Yes, we have locations at Bismarck, Minot, and in Grand Forks, and we have the number at below that to contact all the locations. All right, that phone number will contact any one of those three communities. So Crystal yep. Bearwald from Red Door Pediatric Therapy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. All right, we'll be back. We've got more North Dakota Today coming up right after this.